All right, next question, number two. We're given a new graph. Yes, there it is. Yes. Okay, and a new transformation. This time we have y equals negative 2 of the function. Uh, sorry, negative 2 multiplied by the function of x minus 3, all plus 1. So let's talk about the transformations before we try and draw this. Okay, what's our A value? Negative 2. So that means there's two things happening there. The negative tells you what? Reflection. In what? X-axis. Got a reflection in the x-axis. What does the 2 tell you? Stretch. Vertical stretch. And that's about the x-axis. Factor of 2. Okay, do we have a b value? 1. 1. So is it going to do anything? No. No. So we don't even have to write it. Okay, what about h? 3. Positive 3. Good. So what happens there? We have a horizontal translation, and that's going to be three units right. And lastly, our k value is positive 1. So we have a vertical translation, one unit up. Based on all of those descriptions of how this graph will be transformed, Let's figure out what our point mapping will be. There's a vertical stretch and a reflection. There's a horizontal translation and a vertical translation. So x is only being impacted by the h value, okay, a horizontal translation. So we're moving to the right, so the x coordinate will be x plus 3. Vertically, we have a stretch, we have a reflection, and a translation. So y is going to be impacted threefold, basically. Okay, so we have negative 2 to show the reflection and the stretch. Multiply that by y. And then we're going to add 1 to show that we're moving up 1. So based on this mapping, we can take some of our critical points on the original graph and then plot them. So again, xy is going to be mapped to x plus 3, negative 2y plus 1. And we're just going to look at our original points and move them through that transformation. So first point on the left, negative 3, negative 2. Okay, then we have negative 1, 0. Another one is 0, 4. 2, 0. And lastly, 3, 5. So just by plugging our x and our y values into the mapping, we'll find our new ordered pairs. So negative 3 plus 3, 0. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 plus 1 is 5. So our first point is 0, 5. Next point, negative 1, 0. We're going to plug into our point mapping. So negative 1 plus 3 gives us positive 2. 0 times negative 2 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So our new point is 2, 1. Okay, 0 plus 3 is positive 3. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. We'll plot that now. 3, negative 7. Moving the next point, 2, 0. 2 plus 5, or sorry, 2 plus 3 is 5. So we have 0 plus 1 is 1. So 5, 1. And lastly, 3, 5. 
So 3 plus 3 is 6. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, plus 1 is negative 9. So we're at 6, negative 9. 9. So how wonderful. We have all these new points on the graph, but now we have to figure out how are we going to connect them. So we have to think, first of all, yes, they're going to be stretched vertically, but there is also a reflection in the x-axis. So that means if this was facing down, this straight edge here, it's now going to be facing up. But we also have to take into account that it's moved three units to the right, one unit up, and it was stretched. So that new straight piece is going to be connecting these two. Okay, notice it's three units to the left, one unit up. Okay, and then the rest just follows this pattern, but as a reflection in the x-axis. Okay, so just connecting the dots in order. I'm on the line x equals 2. I'm going to connect then to x equals 3. x equals 5. And then x equals 6. And voila. Any questions so far? How's point mapping for you guys? Brad, any questions? No? Okay. Alright, next part. Uh, they're asking us to use replacement notation to then create an equation given the transformation, but we're going to skip the replacement notation, just go right into the equation. So for part A, they're telling us we have a horizontal stretch by a factor of one quarter. So if we're stretching by a quarter, what's our B value? Four. four. We take the reciprocal. Okay, so B is equal to four. Okay, we also have a vertical translation. Vertical translations are given by K. In this case, we're moving down five, so it's negative five. So we're given B and K. All we have to do is plug that into Y equals F of X now. So Y equals F of, okay, remember B is inside the function that's going to be multiplied by the X, so F of 4X. And then K is outside of the function. If you need a little reminder, just write this out. K is on the outside. And we're going down 5. So we get F of 4X all minus 5. Okay, next one. We have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 fifths. Vertical stretch is our A. And in this case, we take it as is. A is 3 over 5. We also have a reflection in the y-axis. Does that affect our, our B parameter or A? It's going to affect our B because if we reflect over the y-axis, our x values change. Okay, so B is negative 1. And lastly, we have a horizontal translation, two units left. So h is equal to negative 2. And we just have to sub that into y equals f of x now. So y will equal 3 over 5, f of negative. And it's really important in this one, keep the stretch factor or reflection factor on the outside of your translation. Okay, so we have a negative 1 showing the reflection. And we're going to have x plus 2 in its own set of brackets. Now this is really important. 
that you keep these in brackets, okay? Keep the translation separate from the stretch. So for example, if I had y equals 3 over 5, f of negative x plus 2 like that, that's completely different. If I were to factor out that negative, then all of a sudden, the sign on this translation has changed. And you can see when you look at the transformation equation, your stretch factor and reflection is factored away from your horizontal translation. So always make sure you're careful. Okay, stretch factor reflection outside, translation inside the brackets. And if you want to have an expanded form, then you need to basically show that that stretch and reflection went into both. So this is wrong. The only other way you could have written this is 3 over 5, f of negative x and minus 2. What I'd like to see though, as a preference, is this form in red. Negative x, we're moving left, so plus 2. Alright, this time they're giving us the function. They're telling us the original one is x cubed, and then we're going to have some transformations creating a new function, p of x. Okay, the original function they're telling us is stretched vertically about the x-axis by a factor of 0.25. It's reflected in the y-axis and translated three units to the right. Given the original equation of g of x is x cubed, we have to write the new equation. Okay, so let's just talk about our stretches and our translations and our reflections. It first tells us that we're stretched vertically by a factor of 0.25. Vertical stretch is our A parameter. So A will be 1 over 4. If you want to put it as 0.25, you can, but I'm just going to use a fraction. Reflected in the y-axis, A or B? B, very good. A, B is negative 1, so we've done our stretch, we've done our reflection, now we need to do our translation 3 units right. Okay, so H will be equal to positive 3. If my original equation was X cubed, I have to apply these stretches, reflections, translations to that original function. So P of X which is our new graph, will be 1 quarter, and then we're stretching by a negative, we're reflecting, sorry, so we need a negative outside, and we're moving it 3 units to the right, so it's got to be x minus 3. That's all cubed. So if you were to look at that, that's really easy to see. I have a vertical stretch, a horizontal reflection okay, over the y-axis, and a horizontal translation three units right. But what if I expanded this? Negative cubed, negative times negative times negative is what? Negative. negative. So I have that quarter out front. But if I have cubed that, I get a negative one. I'm left with x minus 3 all cubed. Negative times this gives me negative 1 quarter x minus 3 cubed. How is it so that I can show that the reflection here is over the y-axis, but here it's saying it's over the x-axis? How are they the same? Any guesses? Probably best to just check out the graph. And this is unique, so I'm going to show you. Are you laughing at me? No, I was laughing. So I'm going to put x cubed into my calculator, and I'm going to show you what that function looks like. And we're just going to talk about it. Hey, if this was my original function, x cubed, 
and I went to go, what they told us was a reflection over the y-axis. It would look like this. Okay, that arm would be over here, and this piece would be down here. But if I was also to reflect over the x-axis, what would happen? This arm would be down here, and this arm would be up there. So in this case, can we say that the reflection in the x-axis or reflection in the y-axis results in the same graph? Mm -hmm. Therefore, for this question, if you had this form or you simplified to this form, they'd both be correct. So just note that there's, there will be some graphs and some instances where it looks different, but it results in the same graph. So they're both correct. Pardon? Will that only work if it's cute? Um, in this case, that works out that way, but there might be some random functions that you'll see where it happens to be the same as well. We've seen some pretty interesting graphs that aren't actually like an x cubed or squared or square root. There was one example uh, in your homework from lesson six. And I'm just gonna, if you guys go to page 126 and letter E. So I don't know if you've tried that for homework yet, but what you're gonna see is it actually could be a horizontal stretch or a vertical stretch. It could be both. And it just depends how you look at it. But that's a case where there's two two examples of, of correct answers. Okay, similarly to what we just looked at, you could say it's either a, a reflection in the y-axis or x-axis. Both are correct. Okay, so we're going to move on here. So example number five. I already briefly mentioned how you want to make sure that you factor out your horizontal translation, just so that it's really obvious. In this case, they're giving us the original function. It's not defined by anything in particular. But they're telling us that we need to go from y equals f of x to this transformation. It's hard to tell what's going on right here because it's not factored inside. So they've given us a hint. They want us to rewrite it like this. And just so you guys know, the text made a mistake. This close bracket needs to go here. And that can be erased. And k is free moving. It's not within the function. So we're going to go from this transformation mm -hmm. equation and just factor that horizontal translation out. So y equals f of. We're going to factor the half out of both terms. So we're left with x, and then we're going to add, what's 3 divided by a half? It's 6. So x plus 6, and then all minus 8. So by factoring that out, we're able to tell what our transformations are. Our b value is a half. So that makes a horizontal stretch will be by a factor of 2. Okay, we're moving horizontally, in this case, left 6 units. And we're moving vertically, vertical translation, down 8 units. We've done a lot of point mapping this lesson, so just to see if you guys know what's going on, you can work together, but I want you to figure out where will the original points x, y be matched to, okay, given these transformations, what will our new points be? I'll give you a minute to think about that. 